when we think about springs in physics, we think really about two things. We think about the force that is used to compress the spring. So here are some loads applying a force of varying magnitudes on the spring. And we think about the compression or the distance that the spring is uh, distorted by. So uh, this distance x is the difference between the resting extension of the spring and the extension of the spring when the force is applied. So if the original length of that spring was up here, then x in this first case would be this length here. Uh, x in this case would be this distance here and this distance here. Don't fall into the trap of thinking x is the total length of the spring or anything like that. So what we do, we apply a force to a spring or any elastic material and we get some deformation. What we're doing is we're applying a force and getting a displacement, so we're doing some work on it. And we're also storing some energy in there. So work and energy are the two things we're going to look at. If we create a graph of the force applied related to the extension that we get from a spring, uh, we often get, or we pretend we get a, a nice linear relationship there. So for a certain amount of force, we get a certain amount of extension. Uh, you can imagine a stiffer spring than this one I've drawn here, where the same amount of force gives less extension. might have a gradient like that. Or a softer spring that was more easily compressed. A small force will result in a large extension. We'll have an fx graph like that. And so the gradient of this force extension graph really gives you an indication of how stiff the spring is. And we call that gradient the spring constant. We give it the symbol k, and that's an indication of the stiffness of the spring. And so that's the gradient. And so we say that k, we work out the gradient as rise over run, so k is f over x. And we have a rule called Hooke's Law uh, that the force applied to a spring is equal to the negative kx, where k is the spring constant. Why the negative? Well, we normally think about the force that we're applying to the spring, but the force in Hooke's law, in the strict definition of Hooke's law, is actually the force that the spring applies back to the load. Uh, and so it's in the opposite direction to the displacement, and so it takes the negative sign. It tends not to be terribly important for us when normally concerned just with the magnitude. If we calculate the area under a force extension graph, what we're doing is multiplying force times the extension, which is, of course, the definition of work. So we're doing some work on the spring. Uh, we're giving it some energy. We're storing energy in it. So we can find that by calculating the area under the graph. What we do when we do that is uh, we calculate half the base times the height, uh, area of a triangle. Uh, but remembering Hooke's law, that f equals kx, and that the magnitude of it anyway, uh, if we substitute this in for f, because we're often not sure about f, we can measure the extension much more easily than we can measure the force. Uh, we get this expression, a half kx squared. And so that is both the work that's done on the spring and it's the energy stored in the spring, what we call the strain potential energy, SPE. It's equal to a half kx squared, and that's the area under a force extension graph.